previously in Fenero. These are days of the outpouring of the Spirit of God and the glory like we've not seen in a long time on the face of the earth. Now the glory is here. I came to talk about the mantle, specifically the mantle. Because you see, many people do not have an idea of exactly what happened in the spirit on the life of Elisha. Yet what was cast on him released the divine instruction that was to change the course of his life forever. There are things that can happen to you by God and change the course of your life forever. There are things that can happen to you by God and change your direction forever. That can change your boundary of habitation forever. That can change your relationships forever. That can change your home forever. That can cause you to walk from a certain direction and never go back again. Even if it looked like it was obvious that you were supposed to go. You can have an experience by God that will change the course of your life forever. How did Elisha know that this was a mantle to follow? How did the son of Suffolk pick it in the spirit that this kind of anointing was not an anointing to go back and kiss your mother and father? What people don't see in this equation was the instruction that came prior to his experience when God was separating him. Sometimes it's more than the things we do under the anointing. It's the preparation that God puts in your spirit before even you meet the man to serve. It's the visions God starts to put in your heart. It's the dreams that start waking you up at night and they tell you there is something that is coming. But if it comes in this way, follow it. There was something God worked in him while he was still looking after animals. But he was waiting for that impartation. And when that impartation came, he knew that this was not something that was in the ordinary. Something was going to change his life forever. Of course, the Hebrew word there for mantle is glory. The Lord exposed him to a certain glory. And that glory changed the course of his life. But now we're defining the mantle on the Christ. I had to begin from Elijah to show you because you need to understand the anointing. If the mantles of the old were skins of animals, this man bled, hallelujah. If animals had to be sacrificed for men to carry mantles, he became the ultimate sacrifice. Blood was shed to make a mantle and now he comes in your dispensation and he possesses you. You belong to him. He just doesn't have you. No. You are him. He's you. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. He wants to share glory with you. He said, my glory I have given them that they might be one even as we are one. I in them. This is Jesus. And thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them even as thou hast loved me. Think about it. The glory of the Christ rests upon his church to the fullness and it is not limited. Jesus did way more than was written. Even the books, if they were to be written, the world would not contain them. And that same Jesus tells you, greater works shall you do if the Son of God did stuff that the world cannot contain. And that same Son of God told you that greater works shall you do. That means that the stuff coming out of you has to fill the cosmos and way beyond the stars. I want your eyes to open to the greater responsibility that is upon your life. There is more to you. Somebody, there is more to you than what men see.